What's up everybody, it's Lillian and in today's video I want to talk about some of the tips on how to survive your freshman year of college. And I've been a student at UC Berkeley for the past three years now. I'm going to be a senior this upcoming year and I feel like I've learned a lot of things throughout my last three years of college that I really would like to share with you guys. And some of the things I wish I've known when I was attending college as a freshman and I think you guys also find super helpful. Don't forget to like the video for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel for more videos from me and I'll start with the first section of the video. So the first thing that I learned really quickly when coming to college is that no one cares about what you've done in high school and actually no one gives a sh**. <laughs> Basically, if you were valedictorian, if your high school got a 1580 SAT 4.0 GPA, if you were really popular, no one cares and don't be the person that goes to school and flexes about your accomplishments in high school because people will get annoyed and no one actually cares about what you've done in high school. So I know for a lot of people this can be a really humbling experience, especially if you are going to a prestigious or high caliber university where so many of your peers are very similar to you and also very high achieving. So it definitely could be a very humbling experience, but for others who wish they've changed something. College is really the perfect time to get a clean slate and to start over. So either way, I wouldn't really dwell too much on what you've done in high school and just focus on doing well in college and making a new chapter for yourself. This pretty much leads to my next point of not comparing yourself to others. And I know in high school, a lot of people compare themselves to each other when it comes to college applications and getting to like the best schools and things like that. But I feel like in college, I've also myself been guilty of comparing myself to others like oh my GPA is not high enough or I'm not doing as many things as other people are doing. I definitely think that you shouldn't be too sucked into like what others are doing and instead focus on yourself because I realize how everyone has their own path and not everyone's paths are going to be similar or lead to a similar destination so I would focus on working on yourself and try not to compare yourself as much to others even though I know it's really difficult at first but I feel that you'll be a lot happier if you just focus on your own path. Okay, so now on to tips on classes, organization, and time management. So I know this is a really big part of starting college. Something that I've learned when I was a freshman was to not take too many units in your first semester. And this is because when you're transitioning from high school to college, like the type of classes and the way college classes are ran are not like high school. So I remember in high school, you can take like five or six AP classes and still do pretty well. In college, professors teach classes differently than teachers would in high school. So I would definitely take like close to the minimum amount of units or credits that you would need in your first semester to kind of get a feel for how the class system is like. And then after you finish your first semester, you can see how well you've done and start adding more units to your next semesters once you get an idea of how the school system is like in college. Also, you should definitely not take all of your major classes in a single semester. What I've done has definitely helped is to take half your course load in major prerequisites and the other half in general education requirements. So that way you are sort of balancing your schedule and not overloading yourself with too many difficult technical classes in your first semester or even your first year. So I think that helped a lot as well and definitely recommend. And in terms of organizing assignments and deadlines, something that's helped me a lot is every semester when I get new classes and new syllabi, I usually have a physical planner that I use and I take all of the exam dates and important deadlines and mark them in my calendar in a monthly view. So that way I'm able to get like a visual setting of how all my deadlines and exams are lined up for the semester and this really helps with planning and not procrastinating to the last minute because you know when your exam is and something I've also done is utilizing Google Calendar and basically I take all of my time commitments so first I will take my schedule and block off times in my Google Calendar of when I am doing a certain thing. So I would block out all my classes in a certain color and then I would block off other times in my calendar for study time, as well as club meetings, events I want to go to, as well as other hangouts with friends. So this actually provides a really great detailed way of viewing your life on a Google Calendar basically. It also helps a lot with figuring when you have the time to hang out with friends and do other fun things besides studying. So. I would highly recommend using Google Calendar as much as possible. Also, when it comes to academics, don't forget to take advantage of your school's resources because I remember when I was first starting out as a freshman at my university, I was struggling in some of my classes. So there's definitely so many free work resources to take advantage of. So 
A lot of schools have free tutoring services where you can drop in and get help for some of your classes. And a lot of professors and GSIs also have office hours which we can go in and ask specific questions about the homework on a more one-on-one -on -one or smaller classroom setting than a big lecture hall so it's also helped a lot everyone's struggling so just do as much as you can by taking advantage of free resources oh this is also sort of like random tip for more humanities based classes but Google Docs has a really great voice dictation tool in which you can use to record professors lectures onto Google Doc so you don't have to take notes of everything professors say so this is super helpful and you can also use it for writing a rough draft of your essay if that's something you're doing for your classes. So this section's about making friends in college and I know when I was coming to college I was really intimidated because I was coming from a high school of 2,000 people to a university with over 40,000 students. Like the idea of making friends in such a large community was super intimidating and something I definitely learned from my first year in college is that it's a lot harder to maintain friendships in college but it's really easy to make acquaintances. And I know in high school, you sort of see the same people every day. You guys have like the same lunch breaks, a relatively similar schedule. So there's always a set time for your friends, but in college, everyone has different schedules and people have different levels of like busyness. So sometimes you have to make a more conscious effort to make and maintain a friendship. And something I would really do in college is being proactive about reaching out to people to hang out. I like to ask people to get lunch or dinner because if everyone's going to eat, you might as well do it together. And this way it's easier to find room at everyone's like super busy schedules. And also definitely don't stay in your room all day. You should go out of your way to go to club events socials or other parties or things that you're invited to by people because it's really a great way to meet so many new people in college. Okay, so on to dorms. And this is actually a part where there are some things I really didn't know and wish I have known before coming to college and I kind of learned the hard way. So one thing that I wasn't really observant when choosing like roommates is that I feel like doubles where you have one roommate is the ideal situation to be in, but I was in a triple where I had two other roommates and this is something that I definitely wish I've thought harder before and chosen a double. Like in the triple, there's usually the situation where two of the roommates out of three people get along better than the third person. And a lot of times, it makes the third person feel left out in situations. And I know so many friends in my building who've been in triples have also felt in a similar way. I think if I've known this earlier, I definitely would have gone with the double instead of the triple. So that's just something I would think about. And in terms of other things in the dorms, bathrooms are usually shared with the entire floor depending on the school you go to. So something I realized is that if you start showering at peak times in the dorms where everyone wants to shower, so this could usually be between like around 10 p.m. at night and between like 6 to 8 a.m. Showers get really crowded, so if that's not something that you want and you want like your own alone time to shower, you can definitely shower at like odd times at like 4 p.m., 10 a.m. if that's like something that works for you. So that's just something that I've learned as well. And lastly for your dorms, you should definitely make your place feel comfortable because that's pretty much where you're going to be living for most of the time over the year. So you want to make it feel like a place where you can unwind and be relaxed in. So you can put decorations, pictures that remind you of home, and just bring some of the things that you like from your room at home to school so that you feel in a more familiar setting. Adulting. So for many people, moving out to college is the first time they're moving out of their parents' house. So there's actually so many things that you have to manage in your life once you are living alone and your parents are not there to tell you when to do your homework or to tell you when to go to bed and these are some things that you should definitely learn to adjust to when you're living alone also something that you should definitely learn is learning how to cook at least in the first year a lot of students get like dining hall food from their school but at least for me in UC Berkeley where most students move out of the dorms in their second through fourth years you have like an apartment in which you are no longer having a meal plan and it's actually really important to learn how to cook because buying food from outside actually costs so much money and sometimes isn't the most healthy options. So I think cooking actually helps a lot with saving money and also being more healthy in general. Also a lot of students in college, it's like the first period of time when they may get their first job. So this is sort of 
the first time for a lot of people when it comes to managing money. You don't want to be spending all the money that you're making. And I have a video talking about personal finance management for students. So check that out if you want to learn more about how to manage your money as a college student. And lastly, make mental health a priority. And I sort of learned this the hard way because I sort of struggled with this coming into college, but I learned that if your mind is not well, everything else you do in life will be impacted. So you have to make sure that you make yourself a priority and to identify when you're not feeling well or if you need help. A lot of schools have free counseling services that you can use at your school's health center. So I re definitely recommend using those resources and remember health is wealth. So those are some of my tips on how to survive your freshman year of college and hopefully this has been helpful to you and I wish I have known some of these things before starting college so I hope this video has helped you and if you have any questions or comments don't forget to leave them down below don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new upcoming videos and I'll see you guys in the next one bye